Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Russia. I'm actually, I had, had to take a second to collect myself, figure out what was going on since we just had that huge four hour live stream with uh, playing as the Confederate States of America. We went for a strategic play, mainly just submarines. Um, and I learned a lot actually. I learned quite a bit during that playthrough myself. Um, a little bit about the effectiveness of submarines early on. <clears throat> so it appears that our lack of use of submarines through 1910 is actually a really good thing. They don't really come into their own until around the time of World War I. I mean, at least if uh, technology breakthroughs go the way they did with me. It seems like you need medium-range submarines to get really a decent effect out of them. The reliability has to be probably over 55% before you can safely rely on them being effective. So... Um, what is going on with our Russian one? Well, it looks like we are at peace right now. We have a bit of a budget crisis because we just finished building our battle cruisers. Now, I think there's several people who have asked me to change names since the last episode or even since two episodes ago. I'm going to have to recollect those after I record this video because I, I just forgot and I'll, I'll try to take care of those um, before the next episode comes. Great, so in this episode it looks like we're going to have to upgrade our old battleships. They have become obsolete. It's about time for them to be retrofitted anyways. So they are currently dealing with, oh very nice, but let's just look at it this way. They have central firing. Did we, all the series are getting changed around in my head. And to, I'll probably need this episode to kind of <laughs> get my feet back underneath me. Yes, yeah, so we do have director firing. Okay, so I think we should equip these with director firing. So we will uh, actually, let's continue to do this rebuild. Get director firing, which means we'll have to lower the ammo. Oof, lower it twice. Well, that's... Uh. Well, we can lower the secondaries. Let's see how much this rebuild cost changes when we lower the secondaries. Well, it goes up by a million. <laughs> This does end up saving us a lot of space. Otherwise, we're going to have to drop the ammo down to 115, which certainly saves on the rebuild cost. I think that that's going to be okay. These battleships should no longer, they should be phased out, right? So we will be relying on them less and less. Also, um, at this point, with the new battle cruisers, with the newer dreadnoughts, um, I mean, they're slightly older, but at least newer than these guys. If any of my older captains want to be promoted to a, a different change of command to a better ship, just let me know. I think that's completely, completely appropriate, if not always historically accurate. It seems like most captains would stick with their ship. There was a big, uh, it was a point of pride not to leave your original command unless you were commanded to do so. And, and that, that's maintained through today as far as I know. Or maybe people have gotten more ambitious, I, don't, I can't say. So just by doing that, everything is probably about the way we want it. We could replace machinery and do all those little tricks, but I think we're just gonna leave it as this. And the monthly build cost, this is the main thing I was in, being very concerned about. Shouldn't be too bad. We don't have the budget to do you know, crazy stuff, so. We will rebuild all of these guys. We do want to rebuild them eventually anyway, so might as well just do it now. And uh, that means I'll probably end up putting some of my recently constructed ships on hold for their um, the constructions, like these battle cruisers. We're gonna have to pause a few of them, which means probably I wasn't correct to build them so early, but that's okay. We'll make the best out of the situation that we can. Now there's some other obsolete ships, mainly our, um, heavy cruisers here. So good, they are all the same design, but some of them were built late enough that we didn't need to, this is weird, they were all retrofitted in 1904. I don't know how the retro, maybe retrofitting doesn't add in another 10 years. You have 10 years from your initial build date, but maybe retrofits only add five years to the, or seven years, I don't know, to the time you need, before you need to be rebuilt, before you go obsolete. So. Good that we're getting a few more armor upgrades. 
Um, what kind of illicit intelligence operation were you performing? We have pretty low intelligence. Well, um, probably this is what we'll do. Our prestige is not very high. Yeah, we'll do it this way. France. And gosh darn if I don't... Okay, good. Better tech. Gosh darn if I don't know who we've already gone to war with. Now I'm confusing my CSA gameplay with this one. We've already fought France, right? We fought France and we fought... Austria-Hungary. And Germany has been our ally, that's why they've lost ships. Still have not gone to war with Japan, that would be a prime target, of course. I'd prefer not to go to war with France. From a holding standpoint, the way we can get better holdings is really only through war with... So Ireland is a value of 10, we could potentially take that. Eastern Prussia is 12, so we can't get that. Yeah, the only thing we can do is try to get holdings in Northeast Asia, I think. Otherwise, we're going to have to expand to a new sea zone. Which I don't want to do until we've gathered as many colonial... I mean, we've gathered as many pieces of the pie as we can in our current two home zones. So one more turn. Hopefully we... Oh, perfect. That... Actually, this is not going to help very much because their rebuilding cost was pretty minor. We'll probably see this drop only to like negative 4.5, but this is still going to drop down to like 2. Um, except for they're willing to buy some secondary turret stuff, so we'll say by all means. And that, yeah, that was actually really helpful. Better torpedo technology, very good. So one thing I've been looking at as well is I don't know if this torpedo technology, if we look at the ships, it says these torpedo tubes are 18 inch. These are 18 inch, of course, because, well, I mean, they don't have any, but these should be 18, these are, so these are 21 inch. So how does this impact everything? Can you retrofit your ship to improved torpedo designs? I wonder how this 18, 21 inch, I'll probably have to go to the forum to find out. Um, so the torpedoes upgrade over time, but it looks like the size of the torpedo you can carry does not. Kind of like the gun turrets. You can upgrade your um, turret to a better quality one, but you can't change your caliber. I mean, without a massive change. So that seems to be kind of like the situation um, with torpedoes. The, we can't really switch from 18 inch to 21 inch. What are our, as I think everyone else is using 18 inch. And our new Rubens do have 21 inch, that's good. I just wonder if the range and the speed and all that is affected, or if this is just the potency, the damage. Um, if the 21 inch and the 18 inch have all the same characteristics in terms of range and speed, then I don't, I'm not too worried about this, because then, I mean, the 18 inches are going to cause less damage, but at least they don't lack the chance of hitting. But if they are just weak, then that makes these outdated ships far, far worse, especially for the light cruisers and such, which are easier to replace anyway. All right, so we have three more turns. Okay, I've never used semi-armor-piercing ammo. In fact, normally what I do is just go to this auto ammo selection, because I don't, I haven't really paid attention to what's the best stuff to do here. If I really wanted to, we should change this kind of thing, but no, I don't think we will. <laughs> we'll just leave it auto. Okay, the Balkans, always a seat of turmoil. Budget, tension, budget, prestige, down, tension, yeah. So this one. Okay, and we have all or nothing armor. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. This is really early for all or nothing armor, especially considering we're playing with a poorly educated country. So this really incentivizes me to not build any more of our current battle cruiser group. Possibly, after these guys go obsolete, we I think we will be discarding them. Or maybe we should start discarding after these guys. Huh. These guys have served us well. Let's probably retrofit them just one more time. And then I might just eliminate them from our fleet after that. Their range is medium. Their speed is 22. I mean, this is not... 
I'm trying to think if they could still fulfill a role as a as raiders. They should not be part of my main battle line. They're too slow. Although we've kind of set up our fleet to be a slow fleet. Even our battle cruisers are a tad slow. I mean, 26 is still blazing fast compared to... I mean, look at 26 is the fastest ship I have in my fleet, except for a few destroyers. Even my, my new light cruisers, which were only built in like two years ago, are still just as... the battle cruisers are still just as fast as they are. So when you, we think about 26, it's pretty good speed. Um, this is interesting. We need a few more years for those battle cruisers to finish. So I don't want to call a disarmament conference quite yet. I think we'll do this. That seemed to work out well. I don't really want to go to war with France again, but... Yeah, wow, we, maybe we should have, in fact, just, um, I think it would have been a good idea, actually, to just, excuse me, I'm trying to finish this, there, my mic is not, it's trying to tip over, <laughs> um, maybe we should have actually just let that disarmament treaty happen, because one, oh my gosh, why is this happening? We don't have very good tonnage. I I don't really like these designs just because they could have been all or nothing, and they're not. And, and like getting them back, like basically scrapping them. Sure, the investment has been, ooh, it's almost it's been like eight months at three million for three ships. So we're looking at something like eighty million that we've dropped on these guys already. And you know, you think about that, that's a huge amount. But the the cost of these build a full one is whoa that doesn't make sense I have oh yeah 80 million so I, I because of three of them so I've done about you know 25 million per which means that that's not that bad compared to the total cost that 80 million is not even one of these ships in entirely in in entirety well, we're not making much progress. Okay, so I'm getting back in the swing a bit. Sorry, I'm trying to get the pace back up. It's, it's a bit slower right now, I understand. So this is why I shouldn't do more than one series on the same game at a time. Even when you're crossing over between different series of different games, it can be a little confusing. Start losing your mind, but... Alright, do we have better 9-inch guns? All these things are just going to be questions, I don't know. I'm really happy, actually. I'm super happy that we did this. Can we, okay, so this is a question. Can we clear these, 552, five, and re-add the same ones? Oh, well, fine. And are these, I just wish I could see. If these come back, will they be 21 inch? I'm curious, and because our rebuild cost is only 667, I think we'll try that. Let's get director firing on these guys. We can drop as much ammo as we need for that. 145 is still sufficient for these ships, especially because they're going to be merchant raiders more now. Excuse me. Um, otherwise, this was a great ship. I don't think we need to change anything else about it. So well, let's just save it. I don't think it will keep it much longer. To be very honest, I think we will be scrapping our old heavy cruisers probably as soon as they go obsolete again or you know that'll probably be at the end of the next war and now we have our flora classes are starting to age these are our long distance raiders so we do have the risk of them being hunted down so 1905 these were retrofitted in 1905 so it definitely has not been 10 years. I think maybe it's like 8 years after you upgrade. Which is cool. It makes a lot more sense that a retrofit does not upgrade the ship as well as just building a new one. However, we'll keep these raiders along for a little bit longer. Um, I don't think it's worth replacing their machinery and going to oil. Okay, they still don't have... Actually, we might as well, let me just cancel that. It looks like the upgrade for these guys is going to be do absolutely nothing. 
Yes. We just want to slap a new paint on, refurbish the insides, whatever. That seems fine to me. So we'll be doing that for all the floor class. Uh, I think this should, we're not doing anything, so it should actually decrease the amount of budget it cost, which is true enough. Okay, very good. Let's go back to sorting by type. So my ref is on. These guys have central firing, which means they are also due for an upgrade. <clears throat> this episode is just full of <laughs> upgrades. And do we have better 13-inch guns yet? Oh, really? Well, that's pretty horrible. <laughs> Let me just make sure that we didn't add any cost by changing that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we do 1014, director. Yeah, so that was the entire cost was just going to director firing. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so we'll just save it like that then. They'll probably need another upgrade as soon as we get better quality guns. This is going to be a bit expensive. Nope, it's about the same cost as their maintenance fee. So, moving on. This is what our potential enemy looks like. I absolutely loathe this rear firing design. I just hate it. It's, just, it's so silly to me. However, they will be putting on 14 inch guns, so that's an even matchup. Let me make sure my preferences aren't all messed up. Yeah, so let's pause on capital ship hits. Let's pause on, let's not pause on identification. Let's just pause on the sighting of them. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let us know when cruisers and larger start opening fire. I don't really care if destroyers start opening fire. We do want flotation damage wardings, I think. Let's see what, I don't know what that is. I don't remember what that tells us, so let me just do it that way. I don't want AI control of things. We're gonna stay on rear admiral's mode. People were asking about launching torpedoes. Captain's mode is how you launch torpedoes. Yeah, and everything else is probably okay. So, very good. And it's weird, our funds are way more than our monthly balance predicts that they would be. All right. So these guys all finished their reconstruction, that's good. I saw the Tomislav in there. The Desla, the Sabo, Flora itself. You're probably hearing, I hope you're not hearing too much of the background noise. There's a little construction going on around here. Man, let's get this true training, tr true training up. Let's go to torpedo warfare, which, honest to God, is going to be as helpful in night as night fighting is itself. So let's reapply this. Also, hopefully, our crew training will go up. It's been a bit low. Okay, good. All these ships finishing their reconstruction. Yeah, I think the money's worth it. We haven't got internal storage stuff yet. More reconstruction. Okay, our security agreement with G Germany has ended. And probably it's because our SAR has made an ill-considered statement about Germany. Um, I don't think we need our agreement, our... Oh, wow. Prestige down. Aha. I mean, prestige is so low. Although prestige, in some sense, it doesn't really matter. Budget certainly matters much more, but let's do this one. Okay, good. So now we have improved triple turrets, which is perfect because our battle cruisers obviously are coming out with triple turrets. Private shipbuilding has just blossomed. <laughs> Alright, they want to sell us 11 inch quality zero. We have 11 inch quality negative one. Take a look. Do we have any 11 inch guns? No. So I'm actually going to. The reason why I would typically still accept this is because I don't know how the naval technology thing works, but in my brain at least, I can see it. 
that it might work in a way where the game might look for any quality negative one that you have and possibly upgrade those to quality zero as one of the research um, breakthroughs in naval guns. So by taking away the option for them to do that, that means if technically if the random number rolled onto quality zero, um, we would research that instead of researching something interesting. And that by buying this technology, we're kind of like buying whatever technology the naval gun research happens um, to land on instead of the quality zero 11 inch guns. I don't know if that made sense, but that's my rationale. However, uh, you know what? We have the, we do have the money. It's not that much. It's only three and a half million, which is not that bad. Maybe we can design a new heavy cruiser or battle cruiser with just like just as a purely. That's actually a really interesting thing. Maybe we could design a battle cruiser that's only meant to hunt heavy cruisers and lower. Um, yeah, just make it really fast, really light, and give it 11-inch guns. Oh boy, oh boy, our battle cruisers are still like probably a year and a half away. So this is really bad, but we can live with it. This is really risky because if the disarmament treaty doesn't get signed, what happens is our we lose all these things anyway. Budget, prestige, tension. That's just too much for us. I I just don't think. This is only prestige though. Let's do this. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to scrap those battle cruisers, but we've done it. So eighteen thousand tons, maximum of twelve inch, ten years. Ah F and hell. So Germany's only scrapped two. We're coming out worse. Great Britain scrapped four, but that's to be expected. France scrapped two. Two, four. Kind of a pain in the butt. And the worst thing about it is we can't this battle group this battle cruiser class we paid for the initial investment. We will never even see those original battle cruisers. Which means that now I think immediately, uh it's really uh, it's really tough to say whether or not we should be building Oh my gosh, this is perfect. No no no, this is actually perfect. Let us build that really fast, quick battle cruiser design I was talking about. It doesn't need to have more than 11 inch guns, and we can probably reasonably get it within, um, what is our 18,000? So we get 18,000 plus 1,800 because we can cheat a little bit by 10%. So we can build one which is 19,800. I think that's going to be just exactly what we want from battle cruiser. So let's try this again. <laughs> Auto design, it probably won't get it right at all. It doesn't. Let's go to 11 because we have quality zero there. This is interesting. Let me check the gun data. All right, so 10.6, 88, 71. Pretty good, pretty good penetration, even up to decent range. So that's 10.6, 88. This one. Wow. So 14.2, 11, 9. This is so much better. Maximum range 18,000. Maximum range 16,000. Okay, yeah, I think 11 inch ones are clearly the favorites here. Um, these can even penetrate battleships from close range. So we're going to do the configuration the same way. Let's get this one and this one gone. Actually, let's just clear all these. They're all wrong. Know that. The forward superimposed was actually correct, but we want triple in the front and superimposed, superimposed double. The rear superimposed is actually going to be almost as important because this is a ship which may find itself running away quite frequently because of that. Whoops. No. Yeah, because of that, we may, uh, <laughs> we may really need the rear firing guns. And I think that looks good. Um, I think we'll go with five or six inch guns. I don't know. We probably won't be able to get very many six inch guns. So far, we're doing OK. You can see that right now, we're already doing really well. We have the 11 inch guns. We're able to get nine or eight six inch guns per side. That's a little bit low. 
All or nothing armor really helping here. Let's figure out what we're going to do. So this ship only has to be fast enough. I mean, only has to be... Wow, speed of 28. This is so interesting. Probably this is better designated a heavy cruiser still. I mean, it's very light for a battle cruiser. And that, we have to remember that. That's the only point of this ship is to beat heavy cruisers and anything lower than that. Which means speed is everything. Okay, we want oil burning. Do we have oil burning? Yeah, we do. Which gives us a little bit. It's going to make the the, um, the endurance of the ship is much better. Like how long we can push it at its max speed. Well, if it's oil burning, we don't have to worry about clearing the, you know, cleaning the whatever, or shoveling coal, whatever it is. So that's much better for us. Torpedo defensive two, which is perfect. I think that's really a, a nice cutoff. From two to three really costs a lot. Although I don't even think we have, yeah, we don't even have um, defense level three. Is that enough for us to get? Oh my gosh, this ship is really coming together. Now there's a few downsides here. One, okay, our secondaries just put this down to two. It's going to give us a ton of space back. I'm uh, mainly since this is going to be killing lighter ships, hopefully, then I I want more six-inch guns. And these secondary guns, uh, this is kind of a trick. They don't ever run out of ammunition. There's no ammunition for them, so it's another good thing. We actually need a decent amount of ammo for 11-inch guns. They're going to fire pretty quickly. And you know what? Let's give these guys reasonable deck if it's possible to do so. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe it's not possible. I do want them to be able to survive if they're running away from bigger ships, and those bigger ships are going to be firing more at them. Uh, the further away we get, those would be deck hits. So, Wow, damn. Deck is just so expensive. And I want conning tower of 12, turrets probably of 10, flash fires being a big concern. Turret top 2.5, okay, you know what, this is fine, I'm okay with this. Um, I'm not okay with it because actually we want at least 110 shots. I wish there was a way also to encourage your um, ships to fire only their secondary, like if you're engaging, I don't know, destroyers. I've seen it happen several times where they still use their... <laughs> I mean, they still end up using their main guns. 11-inch guns against a destroyer. Uh, torpedoes is an interesting question because these ships will, in general, be going too fast. 25 being the cutoff for submerged torpedo launching. So, we want them to have torpedoes, definitely, but I was thinking of adding some more submerged mounts, but maybe that's not a good idea just because... Yeah, um, can't really take advantage of those at the highest speeds. So basically everything is perfect. Everything is just perfect the way it is. So I guess I'll come down on the conning a little bit. 11.5, okay, I'm fine with that. That's still an inch and a half bigger than the turrets, which is still two inches bigger than the belt. Yeah. And we don't expect to close. The reason why 8 inches is like feels completely okay to me is we don't expect to close with a ship that is going to be capable of damaging us. So that's why 8 inches feels just fine to me. Alright, I like it. I really like this design. The Kinburn? You know what? That's an acceptable name for me. So this is going to take quite a long time. 35 months for us to build, unfortunately. But this is a nice low, let's see, what's the total cost? 2.2 .2 million per month, which is basically half what that battle cruiser was, right? Now we can get two of these battle cruisers, which they're not going to be able to sink other enemy capital ships, except for maybe some very weak. Uh, no, anybody who builds treaty ships is going to, this ship should be able to sink any other treaty ship. Yeah, technically we're missing out on the 12-inch guns, but 11-inch guns is just going to sink everything. I, I really like it. There's a little debate in my head going on about whether we should drop this down to only 18 and actually decrease the tonnage of this just to save a little bit of money. All right, let's just take another 10 seconds to think about this. The critical question is, 
what makes this ship, what is going to be the best configuration for this ship to do its job? Its job is not to kill other capital ships. Heavy cruisers and lower. So in that case, it seems like it's better to lower the belt down to 7.5. I don't think that... I mean, if we look at gun data... Yeah, 8 versus 7.5 is going to be penetrated by 11-inch guns or bigger from basically any range. The good news we see here is that 2 inches of deck armor is actually sufficient for 11-inch guns. So its deck is actually not so bad. Uh, let's think about this. It doesn't really save us much, though. 50... But we could also lower the side guns down. I mean, it's this is going to be firing a 10-sided broadside with 11-inch guns, which means that any light, any light cruisers or higher, we can just use our 11-inch guns. Which will mean the 6-inch guns are less important because we're only going to we're going to be firing less 6-inch guns per side than we'll be firing our main guns. Okay, I think that that because we're able to get the centerline turrets, these secondary guns are just going to be less important. Nine guns for a destroyer. Hopefully that's still enough. Now, can we put these in cases? I don't remember. We can. Can we put them in double casing? I mean, double turrets. No. Still no for that. What's the difference between casemates and turrets? 274. 209. But their accuracy should be better. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a mess, but... <laughs> Their accuracy should be better, especially in choppy water. Turrets is uh, an advantage over casemates. You know what? Why not? Let's do that. Put this up to 115. Oh, we can get quite a lot more ammo for that one half inch of belt. And for the dropping of the number. I think this is a good idea that the 11 inch guns are going to be more important than the 6 inch guns in general. And this is a super fast ship. Any kind of destroyers which try to pursue it are probably going to be cut down by just the amazing speed advantage it'll have. So, anything else now? How much does it cost to give us... No, that's about 300. And long range, I assume, is even worse. Yeah, 500. Okay. Okay, well, we have 100 to spare. Let's see how much... We're at 21... 2.1... Basically, 2.2 .2 million per month. So we can only cut it down to from 2.18 to 2.17. Pretty insignificant. That does translate into a decrease in maintenance cost as well. But I think this ship is perfect like this. It it might it might be better served with a slightly more ammo even. How much does it how much are we really talking about here? Yeah, I think this is a better idea. Let's just use that. It barely costs anything more. So, this is good. Alright, so this is the Kinburn. She's, we've spent about 10 minutes designing her, but very comfortable with her decision. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they show us 7, although there's technically 9 per side. Yeah, I like this. I like this ship a lot. I really like this Kinburn, and she's going to be out raiding all over the world because we just want to get a whole bunch of her. Let's get one for now. Because we don't have a lot of money left. I am just ecstatic. I think that's a great battle cruiser. And it'll be interesting. You know, we're always trying to find a new nook, a new strategy, design strategy. And I think we hit it on it here. A really. This is basically, like I said, a fast, heavy cruiser. Yeah, you wouldn't call this an armored cruiser because it's not the old armored cruiser design, but this is probably the first, the advent of heavy cruisers. We've just done it. So, in this game, CA really does stand for armored cruiser. You're thinking the big, bulky, slow armored cruisers, and that's why battle cruisers are distinguished from them. But now, uh, I mean, then there was this transition when you had like the, the Graf Spee and stuff like that, where they returned to this kind of heavy cruiser designation. Anyway, I'm going to call this episode to a close here. We have run on a little bit. Apologies that it, the episode started off a bit slow, but I'm really back into this, and I'm now immediately really, really excited about this series. 
So um, I'm glad that I didn't name people for the battle cruisers, or if I already did, please let me know. You'll have to be renamed onto one of the new ones because we had to scrap those. Probably should have just scrapped them earlier, would have been nice, but you know, they still had like a year and a half. We only finished about half of them, so um, take that into account when we think about how many ships we had to scrap. All right. Well, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.